I know my purpose. European card came with curtains. I have a daughter, I'm buying a baby burger. Fuck the good and got her legs hurting. Found the wave and got them in. Yo, YouTube, what it is, man? It's your boy, Stud Guy EJ. And I'm officially back, man. And today, bro, I'm just gonna be talking about, man. This has been literally the longest month of my life, bro. Like, everything just been so slow, bro. So, after a couple of days after I dropped my last video, I was going... I was planning to go to camp, man. A camp called Young Life Temple of Camp, bro. That's where I was at for a whole week. So, if you... if. I was in on snap that was that was because of that you know what I'm saying I told my cousin uh, DJ to uh, do my streets for me a jump because you know I wanted to keep my streets with the people I had streets with while I was gone you know what I'm saying somebody look at my look after my snapchat so he took care of that man so my experience at Timber Wolf Young Life Camp bro that is literally like the best camp that I ever been to in my entire life. Like, it doesn't even feel like camp, bro. It feel like a resort, bro. And not only that, I, bro, I'm from Detroit. You know what I'm saying? So, about about a good eighty percent of females I come across be ugly as shit, bro. But all the feet like. I say like 98% of the females that was at that camp, bro, was all bad as fuck, bro. That like, bro, that surprised me, bro, because I I, I ain't know what to expect, bro. And I, not only that, bro, the camp was a Christian camp, but it felt like a resort, bro. Minus the fact you couldn't use your phones, but other than that, bro, that was bro. It felt like a resort, bro, because for one, bro. You you had so many things to do, bro. You could play basketball, volleyball. You can go swimming, go kart racing, archery. Like, bro, it's a bunch of different things you to you could do. Like, you couldn't get bored while you was there. Like, it was like you couldn't be bored there, bro. It was so much to do, bro. Like, it was a, a lot of different things to do. And then not only that, my nigga, it was a bunch of females out there. That, to talk to my G, it like, bro, you had no reason to be bored whatsoever. You ain't had no reason to be mad. None of that, bro. It felt like a resort, bro. The walk, it was hot. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to mention the cabins, bro. The cabins was so clean, bro. Like, the cabins literally looked like, I don't, like, houses, bro. Like, it wasn't even, like, no wood wood log like them old dirty staking cabins that had the bugs in there no i'm talking about this is a legitimate house with different rooms bro bathrooms air conditioning Sh shit they even had a vending machine in there like bro it was so lit and fun bro i remember the first day towards nighttime bro we had did this obstacle course on the first day bro and this wasn't on any type of obstacle course they had told all the campers that if, man, when you come up here, you better bring something you don't care about getting dirty. And because if you don't, it's going to be tough. Like, your shit going to be fucked up, man. So, the obstacle course, start out easy. You know, you it's, it's like some boot camp military training type jump, but it was fun at the same time. Because we had to run with our cabin, with, our, uh, with the people we had came with. We had to run with our campers, and then we had to run with the camp leader, bro, that we had came with, bro. And that junk was lit, bro. Like, when it first started off, I thought it was just regular old, you know, military-type training, bro. But, bro, tell me why. When it got dark outside, it got cold, bro. Like, everything got cold, bro. And then we had went through this one part of the obstacle course where it's like a little maze, bro. And then you had people on top of the top of the darn maze shooting you with water guns, bro. And then it was freezing outside, 
Because I don't know why, bro. It, it just be freezing outside when it's in the summertime, bro. But then, not only that, you getting sprayed by water, bro. And it's freezing. Like, dang, my G. Like, bro. Man. Soon as we get... As soon as I think I'm getting, getting close to the darn obstacle course. Bro. Tell me why it's some darn water slides that literally goes underground, bro. I'm like, bro. First of all, it's dark. Second of all, I'm pretty sure the water is cold. Like, bro, when I first saw the when I first saw people going down the water slide, bro, I thought it was just a regular slight slide with just water. But no, nah, bro, the the one slot I had got on, bro, you start off slow, but then you start picking up so much speed, bro. And then next to you, you know, you go like, bro, it's you drop so fast underwater, bro. Bro, I hit the water so hard, bro. Bro, that junk smacked my eye, bro. It smacked my eye. I saw white for like three seconds. I thought I died because I don't because in within those couple of seconds, I I just thought I was died, bro. I saw white because the water smacked my eye and it was freezing, bro. And I'm pretty sure I wasn't breathing for like a couple of seconds until my man's reached down in the water and grabbed me by the hand and picked me up. I'm like, oh, oh, bro, I'm just breathing hard and shit, bro. And I'm like, man, bro, it's the first day and they getting off like that, bro. And then not only that, while you just got soaking wet in the freezing water, it was like. This little obstacle, it was like this little part of the obstacle course where it was like a bunch of like logs and boxes like floating on top of the water. And you had to try to run across on top of the logs to get to the other side of the water, bro. And to make a long story short, I did not make it, man. I, I, I literally took like three steps and fell right into the water and I had to... And, well, the water wasn't deep, but it was still freezing. I had to literally jump, kept on, I had to keep on jumping and jumping to get my way out of the water because the jump was freezing. And then next thing you know, that was the end of it right there. So then, while I was there, man, they had good top tier food. Like food, you wouldn't, food your mama even wouldn't cook, bro. Like that's how good this place was, bro. And then not only that, you ate three times a day. And then they had like these little lit, these little lit camp sandwiches. After you get done eating breakfast and uh, dinner, where they talk about God and stuff, man, it was all cool, bro. It was all lit, bro. You know what I'm saying? So fast forward, fast forward a couple of days, man. I get home, man, and I just hope happen to meet some meet somebody out there. You know what I'm saying? I was I was planning on. Not even like on no relationship type shit, type shit. Just like just talking, cause I was bored, cause I ain't really had nobody to, to text on my phone. So then, you know what I'm saying? I then gave a couple of uh girls my Snapchat and shit, man. And then I went home, banging music. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all this later. I'm mean, tell. I said later, my dumbass. Not only that, bro. I forgot to tell y'all that. It took us four hours to get up there in the first place. I think it was in Lock City, Michigan, Lake Lake City, Michigan, or whatever the place was. But that's where we was at, man. So then, like I said, fast forward a couple of days after, man. <sighs> a couple of days where before I start working my summer job, man. I got home. Shit was cool. I played my game. You know what I'm saying? I was getting... It felt weird being back home after a whole week. After so, mu- so much happened happened at that camp, bro. Like, it was so lit, bro. Like, that was literally my... That, like, that had to be, like, the best week of my life. Like, no cap, bro. Like, this... Like, no over-exaggeration type shit, bro. Like, this shit was lit, bro. So, after that, man. Next day, after I get come home from camp I had a couple of dollars well no I had some money left over for spending change while I was away for camp bro and nigga tell me why I goes to family dollar to give me a bag of fucking hot Cheetos bro nigga 
So I ride my bike there and I had brought my phone with me while I was wearing some some motherfucking basketball shorts. Now I know a couple of y'all looking like nigga, why the fuck would you get on a bike with some basketball shorts with your phone in it? And to that I'm saying I say I'm fucking retarded. I never do the shit again, bro. Cause after I looked out the store, I hop on my bike. I didn't even make it out the freaking parking lot yet. And my phone fell. Now, that, I was looking dumb as fuck because I'm trying to listen to music while I'm riding my bike. You know what I'm saying? Which wasn't really the best idea. Because my bike don't have no brakes. So, that's kind of stupid. And then I was wearing basketball shorts. So, I had to stop. Pick my phone up. Hook it back up to my headphones. Put the phone back in my pocket. And try to start riding my bike again to go home. Because I'm ready to smash these chips, bro. Like, I was playing my game, bro. Told my bro I'd be back. And I was trying to smash my chips, bro. I was, nigga, bro, I was, like, it's one of those days where you just have, gotta have snacks when you're playing your game. So, tell me why. And I get on my bike. I'll start riding across the street to get... Well, like, um, I was crossing Woodward, bro, to get on my side of the city. And motherfucking, I tell you, this is the worst type of look that ever, like, happened to me, bro. Like, this is the bad look type shit, bro. Like, I feel cursed after this shit, bro. Nigga. I'm riding across the fucking street to get to the my side of the fucking neighborhood, bro. And my phone just to, decides to fucking commit suicide. Fall out my fucking pocket again. And not only that, if that wasn't bad enough, a fucking car ran the fucking phone over in front of my fucking face, bro. I told you I was so fucking devastated when I saw that shit. Like, the crunch of the tire going over the phone sent a fucking shiver down my spine, bro. I literally stood there for about 30 seconds just looking at the phone lifeless in the fucking street. Because I know the screen. I knew the screen was crushed, bro. I knew it was, man. I knew it was, bro. Uh, so after the cars get done flying past, I go to pick it up. I press the power button. The LCD and screen was fucking demolished with the screw protector over it. All that shit was crushed. I told you I was so fucking devastated, bro. Because one, I knew I was going to be broke until I got paid for my job. And Derek began the longest, the, like the longest month of my life, bro. So after me riding home, man as fuck, cussing in my head, bro. I I remember just put putting my phone down on my bed, mad while eating my bag of chips. Like, bro, I was mad, but I was still hungry, bro. Like, nigga, I, I wanted to fight somebody, bro. I really wanted to fight somebody, bro. So, nigga, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, damn, bro. I really don't have no phone right now. Like, that literally just happened. Because, mind you, I only step out the house for five minutes, bro. All that happened in five minutes, bro. Just five minutes. Literally, five fucking minutes. I, I leave, uh, I grab my bike off my porch, head to the store. Tell my, I asked my, I even asked my sister did she want something from the store. She said no. Nah. Come back, my phone just broke and it, it was only five minutes, bro. So, nigga, I played my game. I messaged my bro Iso Collin, saying that, bro, my phone is broke, bro. I'm gonna need you to tell everybody. That my phone is broke, so if I don't respond to messages, that it's because of that. And I asked him to tell my cousin DJ 
to start doing my streaks for me again be- until I get another phone, bro. So, the girl that I ended up was talking to, bro, she she didn't find out my phone was broken till a couple of days later. She thought, I guess she thought I was just ignoring her or some shit. And then I had logged on to my dad's. I had logged on to Snapchat from my dad's phone. And, um... That's when I put it on my story. A couple of y'all probably seen it. That my phone is broke. And it's going to be broke for a good while. So, you know what I'm saying? I was was like dead ass like depressed because it's like when your phone is gone, bro. It's not even like, it's like life just got dropped because you can't even do nothing that you want to do for real, bro. And then not only that, bro, I'm broke as fuck. For for fucking three and a half weeks to four weeks, bro. Literally. So, fast forward a couple of days of depression of nothing but hours just playing fucking Black Ops 3, 2K, and all that other shit. Just playing my game, bro. I start working my job. And I had to... I come, come to find out I had to wait until three weeks to get a fucking paycheck. To, I I literally had to wait three months. I mean, three weeks to get a paycheck. So, not only that, man, we, I'm working in a hot ass summer, bro, doing landscaping type shit. You know what I'm saying? Which it's not as bad. It's like what it could have been because I guess the benefits of me working at the job I'm currently working at is that. It's literally a block away from my house, like a like two blocks away from my house, so I can just easily walk to my job within seven minutes, literally. So, met a couple of dudes, man. Met up with my man's Dylan. Met all the people that I was gonna be working at, working with. Wasn't working with no fucking girls, which is a fucking bummer. I mean, well, it was one girl, but. Nigga, she fucking 14, bro. That don't fucking count. So, yeah, man. I grinded my ass off, bro. I literally bust my ass for them three weeks, bro. Grinding, just waiting for the moment to get a phone. So, after, like, after, like, that first week or, like, first couple, first couple of days when me when I was working, I log on to Instagram from my dad's phone. I asked my uh, cousin to give me back my uh, iPhone 6 that I had let him borrow a couple of months earlier in the year. I asked him to get it back, but you know what I'm saying? He said his mama wouldn't fucking drop it off and, and shit. Just an extra fucking bullshit. Just, and I was just like, oh, man. Well, I'm gonna really have to fucking wait these three weeks. I'm gonna really have to wait these, I'm gonna really have to work, uh, wait out these three weeks. And at that point, I didn't have a phone for already a week. So fast forward, of me doing endless grinding, five hours a day in the sun, finally get paid, bro. And the first day I got paid, I wanted to, nigga, I was trying to go to the bank, bro, so I can go to somewhere to get my phone fixed, bro. But my mama didn't feel like taking me, despite the fact that I work, I literally woke her up and said, when you wake up, can you take me to the bank so I could go get my phone fixed? She said, yeah. She ain't wake her ass up until around four something in the afternoon. I'm like, oh, man, because I know the bank was around. I knew the bank was pretty much just closed around around five, so I was like, "Well, tomorrow's the day." And finally, I finally um, just like caught. Well, I found this place called All Tech Repair, and my man said he could fix my phone. For 40 plus, I get a free screen protector with any fix. So I was like, hey, man, that junk, that, you know what I'm saying? That junk cold. 
So I got my phone fixed, bro. And then I had to go to my niece's birthday party. Yeah, man. That whole, like, that was literally yesterday. I did a lot of running, bro. A lot of back and forth with my big sister. You know what I'm saying? To make sure my niece's birthday party went right. You know what I'm saying? Because I love my niece to death, man. Her third birthday party. So, got my phone fixed. Went to the birthday party. And we had a good time, man. And then that's when I finally told everybody that nigga I'm back. I put that on my Snapchat story and my Instagram story. The gold is back, bitch. I was like, nigga, I felt so activated, bro. I was so happy. Like, damn, that depression, all that shit just instantly went away. Because now I can now I can text old girl that I was talking to. And then I can play my game. And I finally be able to listen to my music and all that. I can finally touch the people that I was trying to for the, you know what I'm saying? For, the, for that whole month. So, yeah, man. That's the whole process was dep- was depressing. Not to mention that later on I'ma have to do senior practicum, which if y'all don't know what that is at my school, I have to go to this, go to my mentor, for like and and just like I don't know, just fucking get in some senior practicum hours so I can make this big presentation so I can graduate. And that's a whole new different process, and that shit is going to be fucking stressful. I can tell you that shit right now. That is going to be stressful, because I'm working, you know what I'm saying, working one one to six, and the whole process is going to like, be tough, because I don't know if my man have his fitness place open around, you know, one through six, and then I imagine I'd be kind of late that I'd be up getting to this place around six. And then I'm going to have to go home in a couple of hours to get some, you know what I'm saying? To get sleep so I can go to work in the morning. But shit, man, that's that's how it is, bro. But yeah, man, I hope y'all like this story time. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? If you new, go ahead and, you know, do all that. Show love. Share this to all your friends and jump, man. I'm going to be trying to drop some more videos soon. I finally got a phone so I can drop some stuff now. So, I'll see y'all in the future, y'all. Peace. Metro on that beat. I call that they don't like to see you win.